Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, what's up? It's nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, Divine Feminine. How you doing girl? <laughs> um, so, as many of you are probably already know, I'm doing these these two videos here, one for Divine Masculine, one Divine Feminine. And I'm saying you probably already know that because you probably watched the Divine Masculine video before you watched this one, didn't ya? <laughs> well, I mean, that's not such a bad thing. It's okay. Um, but if you have watched that video, then you know what this is about. So if you haven't, if you're starting with this one first, then I'm, I'll, I'll break it down for you. Um, Spirit, after I did this, the last uh, conversation, a twin flame weekly conversation titled divine masculine seemingly endless endless tower moments and divine feminine um going diving even deeper <clears throat> spirit was coming forward and the divine masculine collective were coming forward being like um so we're gonna need you to do another round but this time we need you to split it up and i and i stated i was like spirit i don't do that and they were like we know but this time it's different like the individuals need advice okay this is this is for those of us that are still very much in the um, yin or yang energy, not necessarily coming into a balance with it, um, and are struggling, are trying to really figure out why things have changed so drastically. Why has the divine feminine pulled away from me so much? Why don't I feel the divine feminine anymore? Why don't I feel the divine masculine anymore? Spirit kind of intervened and was like, okay, Eric, we're gonna need you to do something a little different this time. And I was like, you know what? Actually, now that I think about it, okay, you've made your case, I'll do it. Because ultimately, I'm here to help, all right? I'm not here to be this preachy bitch, you know, trying to get y'all to do the right thing. Nah, man, come on. I mean, ain't nobody got time for that, all right? Um, I'm here to help. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, so here, this is for the Divine Feminine. This is not so needed. You don't need this as much as the Divine Masculine does. But um, Spirit just said, you're still worthy of it, so we're going to give you some extra extra things to think about as you move through. Like, and, and, I, and what I said in the, in the, the weekly conversation is um, the Divine Feminine was shrouded in white, almost like she is in a cocoon. So these are some things to think about um, as you are in this cocoon stage. Many of us are emerging from it. Um, but this is just, you know, things to think about, energies to let bounce around in your head as you do this. Yeah. So let's get into the cards here. I do have some, so what I'm doing is I'm using this deck, the uh, Universal Golden Tarot. I love this deck. It's so gorgeous. It's based off of the traditional Rider Waite deck um, with some minor variations that if you watch the Divine Masculine video, you found, you saw one of them, the Page of Pentacles looks like an adult. I mean, and the, what is it? The Page of Wands also. They look like grown-ass men. It's the craziest thing ever. Whereas the Page of Cups looks like this little, looks like a kid, looks like a little kid. And then the, 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 the Page of Swords looks almost like a teenager, maybe somewhere close to his 20s or some shit. It's crazy. I really kind of love it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm using the, the uh, Golden Universal Tarot to bring us the, the basic messages. And then I'm using the Crystal Mandala deck and the, and the, um, uh, the Lightworker Oracle to give us some extra Oracle gui Oracle guidance. I already have the two cards for the from the Crystal Mandala. Like I just finished the Divine Masculine video and I was shuffling things up and these two cards popped out and Spirit was like, "That's for the Divine Feminine." I was like, "But Spirit," and they were like, "That's for the Divine Feminine." I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> and then two cards from the Lightworker deck came out. Now I am gonna pull one more card on camera from the Lightworker Oracle, just to make it fair, because I got three for the Divine Masculine, so I'm gonna do three for the Divine Feminine, but gosh, Spirit's taking all the excitement out of it, guys. <laughs> Don't listen to me, I'm being silly. All right, let's get into this, shall we? Here we go, all right. So, I encourage everyone to settle in. Let's connect energetically. This is a Divine Conversation, guys, so if you got, if you got it, smoke them if you got them. Pour yourself a glass of wine, have yourself a cocktail, grab yourself a beer. I've got me a cider right here. Hello, Angry Art Orchard. Woo! And <laughs> let's get into this, yeah? I just saw 441 on the counter, but 444! Woo! <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> you can tell I'm in a really good mood. Whew. Let's connect, guys. Deep breath. Spirit. 
Spirit. Hey, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Divine Feminine Collective. Please bring forward the best messages at this time for the Divine Feminine and for the highest good of all involved. Please help us understand what's going on for the Divine Feminine right now in this cocoon phase. Whether you're starting to enter it, whether you've been in it for a little bit, or whether you're emerging from it at this moment. Just help us have a greater understanding, a, a bigger picture view of what's happening within, for the Divine Feminine, within the Twin Flame Collective and the, the Twin Flame Journey. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right. So let's shuffle this up a little bit. Divine Feminine. There's a lot of pink, so that's unconditional love right there. That's a good thing. But what it's saying to me specifically is um, there's a lot of unconditional love coming through in this reading and for the Divine Feminine and for the Divine Masculine too. Divine Masculine, many of you could be watching this too to get an understanding of what's going on with your Divine Feminine at this time. And Spirit is letting you know you are encouraged to continue to do so. And you are encouraged to believe that you are loved unconditionally, Divine Masculine. But this is for the Divine Feminine, so I'm going to talk to you now, ladies. Yeah? Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. All right, one more shuffle. And then I'm just going to free shuffle and let the messages fall out. Okay? Okay. So this is probably not going to look like the Divine Masculine spread. This is just a free thing. So let's go. For the Divine Feminine Spirit, what have you got? What you got for us? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I don't want to do it this way. Okay. All right. So let me reshuffle a little bit. We've got the, the intention is set. The intention is set. So what I'm going to do is say, is I'm going to shuffle... And then I'm going to cut the deck, and I'm going to do this free, I'm doing freestyle reading. Now, this is, it's funny, because when I started the Divine Masculine video, I started saying I was going to do my, my freestyle reading, and then I was like, no, nope, actually, I don't want to do it like that. <laughs> because Spirit was like, had a lot, it was just coming out for the Divine Masculine. Divine Feminine is in a little, little bit of a different space. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it the traditional way when I do my, my freestyle reading. If you're familiar with my channel, you know these from the Zodiac readings. Um, I'm just going to do one column of four sets of two with the overall energy above it. Okay, Divine Feminine? And then we'll get into our Oracle cards. Divine Feminine. All right, one more shuffle for you, Divine Feminine. I'm sorry I'm taking so long to do this, but I do like to do this stuff on camera. Okay, here we go. For the Divine Overall energy, we've got the Ten of Swords. Well, gee, isn't that appropriate? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, the Ten of Swords. We've reached the end. We've reached the end of um, this backstabbing energy, this painful energy. And this is not uh, Divine Masculine. If you're watching this and you're getting triggered, this really does not necessarily mean you. Okay? There are a lot of things that have gone on in society when it comes to how feminine energies are treated and feminine figures are treated that are literally needing to come to an end. And it's the divine feminine that's putting a stop to this because they're no longer getting involved with situations like this. Look at that. We've got the emperor in reverse. And we've got the ace of cups in reverse. I'm going to put this here. Oh, 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 and look, there's that page of swords. Look at him. Look, I'm going to turn it upright so you can see it. But he looks like he's like a teenager, or at least in his early 20s. It's the craziest thing ever. Um, that's the page of swords, and it's reversed as well. All right, so here's what this is. Yes. Oh, gosh, spirit is like screaming it in my head right now. Divine masculine, even though the emperor is here and you are the emperor, okay, the emperor does symbolize your energy, divine masculine. What this means for the divine feminine is... This is the end. This is the end of giving 
to situations that have been manipulative, narcissistic, abusive. No longer handing this cup over to the patriarchy, over to the society um, in expense of your own self. No longer handing this cup over saying, oh, it'll, it'll work out eventually, or oh, they'll change one day. Uh-uh. Listen here. If you haven't changed, I take a walk. And you get to change on your own. Or you don't change at all. No longer my problem, says the Divine Feminine. And also, that's what the, that's, that's what the Page of Swords in reverse is saying. Because the Page of Swords is like an immature way of seeing things. The Divine Feminine is letting go of this way of seeing the situation. If it doesn't resonate with, the, if, if it doesn't resonate with her, if it does not serve her highest good, she is not going to take a, a position, a mental position, a mental standpoint of, oh, well, maybe if I just stick it out, or, oh, they'll see the error of their ways one day. No. Hail to the knob. So this is what this cocoon stage is for you, Divine Feminine. Okay, this is you coming to terms with this kind of energy. This is you building yourself up stronger so that you can emerge greater and stronger than you were before. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Moving forward. We've got the Two of Cups in reverse. Wow. With the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, so this is um, this is talking about the divine feminine, no longer holding herself back um, for this or any other relationship. That I mean, the nine of pentacles is is a, is a very much an independent card, but I also can see it as sometimes as someone that's a little sheltered, you know, like someone that has like all the material things that they could need and doesn't really leave their house much. Like, that's the kind of energy that I'm getting from it in re right now in the reverse, especially when it comes to the Two of Cups. So to me, this is talking about the Divine Feminine, in essence, not really holding her, putting her life on hold anymore. And I know for, mo for the most part, that really wasn't the case. But when it comes to romance, a lot of the Divine Feminines were like, well, no, I don't, I don't want to pursue anybody else. I mean, the feelings that I have for my Divine, divine Masculine are so strong, I don't even want to think about thinking, some thinking of someone else. Like... No. Why would I do that? Well, now that's changed. But only because of the kind of narcissistic, abusive type shit that's been going on. And and again, divine masculine, if you're watching this and getting triggered, understand that we were all we're all playing a role we decided upon before we got here so that we could clean all this stuff up. This is all just a part of the path, a part of the journey that we all agreed to, guys. Okay? I said it once, I'll say it again. We all agreed to this. <laughs> even though it's shitty, even though it's abusive, even though it's, it's, it sucks and it's painful and it's one of the most traumatic experiences you may ever have in your life, it's also one of the most beneficial and eye-opening. Okay? Ultimately, it's leading to growth. Excellent. Moving forward, Divine Feminine. We've got the Hermit. Yeah! So this is that stage. Okay, either you're in this stage right now, you're entering into it, or you're exiting out of it. All right? But we've got the Hermit with the Queen of Cups in reverse. And now the Queen of Cups came out in reverse for the Divine Masculine, too. So we've got some mirroring here. All right? So from, from the Divine Feminine perspective... There are some things that need to be healed on behalf of the Divine Feminine. What is that? Well, um, number one, um, being devalued for, I'll say our, because even though I'm male and gender, I am a feminine energy. Devalued for our emotions. Feared for our intuitions. Um, used and abused. Walked all over because we were weak or inferior. What else? Uh, smother energy. Feminine energies that have taken feminine qualities and twisted them and used them and abused them to get what they want, just like masculine energies have done with their own power. 
If you are entering into this or if you have been in, okay, well, if you've been resonating with this hermit cycle, this hermit stage that I've been talking about, this is what you're working on healing. This is why you're kind of going into a bit of cocoon. Because this is some pretty deep-seated shit. And it's going to take some serious willpower to step out of it and stand on your own in the face of it. Because even when you come back out of this, if you're not out of it yet, even if you when you come out of it, you're still going to have to stand up with this newfound strength and wisdom that you've gained within this hermit mode. Yeah? Oh no, my cider's empty. <laughs> anyway, moving forward, we have the Four of Pentacles. Okay. With, look, 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 guys, look, it's the Page of Cups, and look at how young he looks. Ha <laughs> ha, isn't he cute? He's so cute. Okay, anyway, the Four of Pentacles and the Page of Cups in reverse. Um, I'm picking up a little bit of the smother energy here. Uh, the overbearing thing, maybe even the helicopter mom situation. Um, holding on, and this message came out in the Divine Masculine reading too, so this is really, really interesting. But for the Divine Feminine Collective, it's holding on to dear life for someone in regard, um, um, out of fear of letting them go out of fear of letting them move on with their lives and potentially never coming back to you. And I'm also seeing, I'm also seeing some feminine energies being afraid of like letting their children go and then their children grow up and see the bigger picture and turn around and like, how on earth could you have taught me that? Yeah. that's scary. Because at that point, you have to face yourself, don't you? Mm. That sucks. But this is part of what is being healed on for the Divine Feminine Collective. And this is not just within the Twin Flames. Like, Twin Flames are taking the lead here, okay? Twin Flames are doing a lot of the energy, most, well, no, not most, we're doing a lot of the energy work because it's split between a bunch of different um, sources. But we're doing a lot of the energy work to transmute a lot of this stuff. And these two, well, actually these three so far, this is like, this is what we've been working on. This is, the, this is what's happening here, okay? All of this, all of this is what's happening. <laughs> Finally, we have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. with the Ten of Wands. So look, more completion. And especially on this Twin Flame situation, the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Wands are like besties. <laughs> they have been. It's so funny. And both of them are coming up, up, coming out upright here. Now, in relation to the Seven of Pentacles, this is very much a very similar energy or message that came out with in the Divine Masculine reading. Um, which was the Knight of Pentacles in reverse and Temperance, was it? I don't remember now, but I know it was the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. And so here we have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. And the Seven of Pentacles in reverse talks about procrastination. It talks about overanalyzing things. When you really just need to either shit or get off the pot, <laughs> is what spirit wanted to say. And because of that, the divine, the feminine energies will say, because we're doing a lot of healing on behalf of the, the whole feminine collective, the whole divine feminine collective, even if you're not on a twin flame journey. So because of this, oh, and spirit just said, because of a willing, an unwillingness to stand up for yourself. But then there are, but then see, I, I hesitated to say that because that's going to flare up a bunch of feminists that have been standing up for themselves for years. And then Spirit said, yeah, well, Eric, it's kind of a pendulum swing because sometimes that can go too far. And so you create even more burdens to carry. 
with this Ten of Wands here. Ooh, that was deep. Overcompensating for lack of action in the past. It's time to stop that. It really is time to stop that. And that goes for the Divine Masculine too, okay? Because it's not serving anything. It's not getting us anywhere. But keeping us in this perpetual battle. One side is hurt and stews on it forever until it just comes exploding out. And then the other side gets hurt and they either retaliate right away or they stew on it for a while. And then you, you, see, you see how that just keeps going? That's what we're talking about here. So what does that take? This last, healing this last bit, what does that take? That takes going within and doing your internal work to heal and forgive. From there, then you can reemerge in the physical world and look at your, or who you once considered to be your enemy and say, let's just leave that in the past and let's start something new together. Let's cooperate. Let's try this again. I'm not asking you to forget the past. I'm sure neither of us can forget the past. But we can forgive. We can learn from it. We can learn from our own actions. We can learn from your actions. And we can all move together in harmony. We can all move forward together in harmony. We don't have to be best friends. But in spiritual truth, we are all brothers and sisters. So why should we fight each other? We all do have one common goal, don't we? So what are we fighting for? Mm -hmm. There's that. Okay, so let's get into the Oracle Guidance here. I'm starting with the um, Lightworker Oracle. Two cards popped out already. Um, and I said to Spirit, can you at least let me call, draw some cards on camera? And they were like, all right, fine, you can draw the, the third one. I was like, gee, thanks, Spirit, you're so generous. <laughs> I'm really just kidding. Spirit is extremely generous. But y'all get it. So does Spirit. So who, what am I explaining myself for? Anyway, we've got the first card that came out. And, and honestly, though, when I saw these cards, I was like, oh, damn, you're right. These are perfect. But we've got third card number 34, Hold Your Center. Okay, that boils down to a seven. We next we, we next have card number 29, the pink rose of Lady Nada. And that is, a, is an 11 card, y'all. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, and so finally, I'm going to just free shuffle and see what's the last card that's coming out. Message for the Divine Feminine. There it is. Ooh, Archangel. Oh, I'm sorry, Alchemical Mutation. Yeah. Yeah, alchemical mutation. And that's card number 31, which boils down to a four, which is all about stability and foundation, guys. Okay, let's get into card number 34 here. Hold your center. And I'm just going to read the beginning of it, unless, and then I might skim through to see if there's anything else that's poignant. But I am reading the beginning of it just to save some time. Card number 34, hold your center. Have you been rushing out to meet others, trying to bend or accommodate their needs at the expense of your own well-being and inner peace? Holy shit. <laughs> Can we think... Isn't that exactly what we were just talking about? Okay, all right, cool. Just, just wanted to be clear on that. I'm gonna start over. Have you been rushing out to meet others, trying to bend or accommodate their needs at the expense of your own well-being and inner peace? Now you are to strengthen your own energy, your own boundaries, to find your ground. Firmly place your feet there and do not move. Feel your feet anchoring you like a beautiful tree. Let yourself experience quiet certainty as you hold your center with commitment, courage, and consciousness. That is literally what I was describing this cocoon phase as. Many souls who are different and unique were not understood, acknowledged, or valued for whom they were as children. Instead, they were encouraged to conform, to change, to be other than their true selves in order to be loved. This can be a hard pattern to break, yet the time is here for you to love and honor yourself as yourself. You are beautiful. You do not need to change for another. You certainly do not need to change for the divine. 
you are being encouraged instead to distill your essence to become even more of you. Hold your center now and do not be rattled by any other through intimidation, confrontation, doubt, jealousy, or fear. To quote, hold your center means to accept your innate value and worth, your right to exist and thrive and accept the love that created you as in order to fulfill your divine. I'm sorry, uh, accept the love that created you as you in order to fulfill your divine destiny. This oracle brings you confirmation. You are on the right path. You do not need to collapse into fear or doubt to ease old guilt or make others feel comfortable. It is not selfish or, quote, hard of you to be strong. You can hold yourself in high esteem and be gentle and loving to others whilst absolutely refusing to accept any behavior, belief, or attitude of another that would tear you down or cast you into doubt or self-hatred. Fucking right. Excuse me. <laughs> but damn, y'all. That couldn't... I, I swear to God. I am not somebody that comes out in here and goes through the deck and says, hmm, what can I pick out that will be perfect? No, these two cards fell out. Whew, that was really intense. All right, let's get to the second card here. Card number 29, the Pink Rose of Lady Nada. You are in the midst of a heart healing. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and I'll show you why in a second. A healing of the fears and anxieties that have held you back from enjoying your full magnificence. Lady Nada is here with all her gentle power, washing you in a soft pink light. All anger, fear, sadness, bitterness, disappointment, and hurt are soothed and loved into place. She brings you a sign of your future blossoming into deeper love. <sighs> this all I mean this that this card really just feels like this beautiful little cocoon you're just kind of resting in divine feminine. Yeah. Yeah, that's Okay, so that was confirmation of, you know, this cocoon. Excellent. And also, for those of us that are resonating with rainbows as a sign right now because I know I am and some others are, here it is. You've got a rainbow divine feminine. <laughs> okay. Finally, and I really feel like this is a super powerful message right here. Card number 31, all alchemical mutation. <laughs> here we go. Your spiritual growth is changing your mind, body, and soul. It is very real. It is helping you fulfill all aspects of your divine destiny. It is awakening spiritual talents and attracting in new energies. This process will bring tremendous joy and satisfaction. Okay. Hold on. All right, so I'm going to read these two paragraphs here. Yeah. This, alchemy, this, this alchemy is an empowering gift of love. Symptoms of this process can at times be challenging. They may include headaches and overwhelming fatigue that lasts for days and then suddenly vanishes along with a, with a surge of new energy. We may also experience pinging in the ears, which I think is also, they're, they're referring to ringing in the ears, increased sensitivity to light or sound, hormonal imbalance and hot flashes, excessive sexual energy, mental obsessions or mood swings, aggressions and unintentionally harsh reactions to people. If you have been experiencing any of the above, and wondered if these or other unusual symptoms could be a direct result of increased spiritual energy affecting the body, then the answer is that this is very likely. You are encouraged to source whatever professional health support you need to take care of your body. Also, consider using the following simple practices uh, to ease the side effects, but um, getting regular rest, allowing time for physical exercise, uh, you can take some time away from meditation if you need to. Spiritual studies or discussions. Like, taking a break is absolutely okay. Like, simply be in nature or rest is what the book says. If you work with colors, then take a break for a short time, only working with very soft, subdued, white, or colorless light. If you have a tendency to push yourself with spiritual work, learning to take time off on regular occasions will help you recover more quickly and suffer less. And I said, I said that to somebody in a reading I did recently. Mm-hmm. Here it is again, girl. I love you. <laughs> okay. But yeah, 
There's that, guys. So those cards were pretty perfect. So now I have even more faith in the Crystal Mandala deck cards that came out. Um, because, actually, those came out first because I was reshuffling those before I did the Lightworker Oracle. And immediately when I saw them, I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, I really need to save these because these are perfect. And I wanted two cards anyway. I wanted two cards not only to give us guidance, but also to give you guys some crystals to work with if you're into that. Like if you want some sort of physical help with this challenging energy that we're feeling, this shift in the energy that we're dealing with, I was asking the spirit to give us two crystals. The Divine Masculine got some. He got the Divine Masculine got Hematite and Cat's Eye. The Divine Feminine. Uh oh. Sorry, I almost dropped the cards. The Divine Feminine got Rose Quartz. So heart healing. Um, and that's Archangel Balthiel and Rose Quartz. And Ascended Master, Mother Mary, and Celestite. Unconditional trust. Couldn't be any more perfect, guys. So, Divine Feminine, if you would like to invest in some crystals at this moment to help you with what you're dealing with right now, with what we're all dealing with right now, to be honest, you can either get a piece of Rose Quartz or a piece of Celestite, or you can get both. And I would recommend keeping it on you at all times. And I did not say that for the Divine Masculine, and I should have. But if you're watching this now, Divine Masculine, keep them on you at all times, okay? I mean, you don't have to. You could just keep them in your room. You could sleep with them under your pillow. I like to keep the crystals that I want to work with with me all the time. So I'm constantly carrying my, my clear quartz. I wear my onyx around my neck. And then I, I have, me and Amethyst have become like best friends recently. And then I've got this crystal phrase here this crystal, which helps um, connect, helps you with um, tr with uh, forgiveness and connecting with the devas. And I believe the devas are of the ninth dimension. And then I also was carrying around this rose quartz for a while. Um, so yeah. Okay, so let's get into the definitions here. So first we have uh, heart healing, card number 16. Heart healing. We bring you the gift of heart healing. Over many lifetimes, your beautiful heart has loved and lost and loved again. You have learned how to feel joy, pain, suffering, and bliss. Your wise heart knows that life is filled with darkness and light, and it chooses to love the divine and participate in life anyway. You might worry that your heart has been stretched beyond its limit, become closed or broken, yet your heart is filled with divine grace, power, and of course, love. It can and will heal itself to love again bigger, bolder, and braver than ever before. Do not doubt the healing power of your heart. This is power in your heart to heal through struggle and into joy. There is power in your heart to heal and, I'm sorry, let me try that again <sighs> for the third time. <laughs> there is power in your heart to heal through struggle into joy, and your heart has left the gift of helping to heal others with love. I'm sorry. Wow, I cannot read right now. And your heart has the gift of helping to heal others with love. Your open, kind heart helps soothe others, bringing comfort and reassurance to the world. Trust your heart and let it heal and guide you into the most beautiful and loving divine destiny waiting for you. So gorgeous. Okay, finally, card number 31, Unconditional Trust. And this is Mother Mary, y'all. Hey, Mama, how you doing? <laughs> All right, Ascended Master, Mother Mary, and Celestite, Unconditional Trust. We bring you the blessing of unconditional trust. There are times when trust comes easy. Perhaps life is proceeding according to some sort of plan, or you have enough money to feel safe, sufficient prospects on the horizon to feel excited, and enough love in your relationships to feel wanted and valued. Then there are times when it is harder to trust. Perhaps none of the above applies to you. You are lost, feel alone, confused, and without a clear plan or sign of hope ahead. You might be frightened and just want something to lift you out of the darkness and into the light. Your mind, and perhaps your family and friends, might tell you that this is a time that is crazy to trust. They may tell you that you should try to fix yourself, to get real, to give up, on, to give up and get on with life. 
Do not listen to doubts or negativity in others or yourself. It is safe to trust. The Divine Mother is watching over you and will guide you safely into the new life awaiting you now. I really don't think I need to say any more, anything more about that. This was quite a beautiful reading. Both of these came out to be quite beautiful readings for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Even though I get, didn't get to pick all the cards on camera. <laughs> I'm being a brat. Anyway, I'm just being funny too. Um, yeah. So there it is, guys. I hope this was helpful for both you, Divine Feminine, and you too, Divine Masculine, because I know some of you are watching. Yay. <sighs> yeah, so there it is. Um, I am feeling compelled to say, even though you guys already know this, but Spirit is guiding me to remind you guys that I am, in fact, available for private readings. So hit me up. Yeah? Okay. I love you guys, <laughs> and I'll talk to you later. Mwah. Bye.